Hi guys, a very warm welcome to everybody present. This is Architecture Talk Talk with Sarah Colata and we're gathering today for the first conversation held with Jeff Eccles and Brian McCartney. Uh, I invited the two experts today because the world is finding themselves in the midst of a big global crisis related to the coronavirus outbreak and most of us within our industry are at the moment working from home in isolations and many of us are wondering what's next. So we called this meeting today to discuss some of the issues that we're all facing as architects um, and ideas of how to pivot around this. I'm an architect myself. I had a company in Guatemala which was serving the humanitarian sector of architecture and um, Right after wrapping this project up, I've come over to Europe and I started working as a digital strategist for architects, helping them position themselves as experts online and exploring opportunities of digital education within architecture. I help architects record their own online courses. I also run a blog called at Saracolata on Medium. I very much invite you to take a look in there. There is a lot of advice, especially for the times that we're living in right now, which is related to finding ourselves having to work remotely. Today, we've gathered here with two experts that have incredible expertise of working online, and I'm hoping that from their own experience, they'll be able to share with us some tips and advice as to how to transition into the times when we're basically being forced to turn completely digital with our businesses. So Brian and Jeff, I'm going to let you introduce yourselves. Brian, do you want to start? So my name is Brian McCartney. I'm with Arcmark. Uh, we are a architect a branding and marketing firm in uh, Southwest Florida. Uh, we work with architect firms uh, across the country here in the U.S. And, um, uh, you know, our main focus is really helping architects to uh, kind of build their brand, uh, uh, help them communicate their value through messaging, uh, help them uh, build good websites uh, so they can get found online and then help them uh, generate new leads. So that's basically what we do. And uh, yeah, we're hearing some things as well here uh, about coronavirus as everybody else is, and I'm looking forward to this discussion. Excellent. Jeff, welcome, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, my name is Jeff Eccles. I'm the President and Chief Strategy Officer of Echo Engagement, uh, and also the host of the Build Your Brand podcast. And um, I, I help professional services firms and very oftentimes architecture and engineering firms really look at and answer one question. And it's the question that everybody's asking and it's why should I choose you? Your clients are asking that, your employees are asking that, your prospects are asking that. So most of my work focuses on answering that question in a way that not only differentiates you as a business, but makes you more relevant to that ideal client than your closest competitors. Um, and so my, my mission this week has been to talk to as many people as possible in the midst of this global crisis that, that you just described. Um, and, and I've, you know, there's been a lot of, of uh, heartbreaking uh, and interesting and heartfelt conversations this week. So I'm, I'm happy to share and uh, happy to learn about everybody else's experience. Excellent. Thank you very much for your introduction. So as you see, we kind of decided to come together in order to discuss those subjects. And I think it, what is really interesting is that both Brian and Jeff actually have a big following and con connection within the architecture industry and uh, they have been reached out to um, by architects um, with questions, with concerns. And so this is the reason why we call this meeting to discuss it and perhaps with the, with the help of, of this broadcast, we can actually reach out to people that are perhaps facing the same concerns and asking themselves what's next, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so really, uh, and this is gonna be the question to both of you, um, I'm, I'm curious about what did you find to be the biggest roadblock right now for architects? Um, yeah, I'll go if, if, if that's yeah. right. Um, uh, you know, I, it's interesting. I'm hearing different things, right? So from, from some of my clients, I'm hearing, yeah, we, we've already transitioned to working uh, from home. Everybody, you know, we wanted to be uh, 
abundantly cautious and, and make sure that our people are safe. And so we've, we've transitioned everybody out of the office. Uh, we're, we're all, you know, autonomous and uh, we're, we're working uh, efficiently that way. Uh, from others, I've heard that, um, you know, we weren't prepared for this. We, we, we aren't set up to work from home. So uh, we're looking at that and, and trying to make that transition. I think, and then, and then I've heard uh, just not directly, but indirectly, I've heard from others who have said that, you know, uh, they're, they're, not, uh, they're, they're not that concerned about uh, this and they're still in the office, they're still working and functioning just fine. Um, I think I, I think for me I, I you know th this has been a it's been an interesting week I think uh, my my biggest question is what's going to happen over the weekend as we move into next week you know what are we going to learn uh, there's just been so much uncertainty around this that I think a lot of people are just kind of trying to figure out where they are right now um, trying to figure out the best course of action for themselves. And I think I think that's just that's how you got to play it. You got to you got to figure out what's going to work best for you and your team right now. And um, uh, that's that's kind of where I'm I'm putting things and in, in trying to advise people uh, to just you know have your own plan and uh, try to try to try to think about what's coming next and and uh, what you're gonna what what what's going to cause you to make sudden shifts and pivots uh, as you move forward. I think, you know, to kind of continue on the same thought as Brian, you know, what I'm seeing is, is, I guess I would describe it as sort of a spectrum, right? And if I were to try to categorize it a little bit, uh, I would see that many people in medium and larger firms are looking at it and saying, okay, um, we're starting to figure this out. Maybe we had started preparing, uh, maybe not, you know, to, to what Brian said, there yeah. are some firms that, um, you know, they're in very, very new territory right now, but many of the medium to larger firms are looking at it and saying, okay, um, you know, this is, this is what we think we can do to best protect our people and our clients and continue to serve our clients. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's sort of this, new normal, if you will, that's, that's kind of shaking out. For smaller firms and smaller businesses uh, in general, certainly, I'm seeing a lot of despair. I'm seeing a lot of people that are very worried. Um, you know, they, they don't have the uh, capacity to endure a, a long-term shutdown or, or anything like that. And so I, th I think that's sort of the spectrum that I'm seeing. Now, the common thread that I'm seeing and the things that we're talking about are the fact that as we're starting to figure this out, there will certainly be this dip, you know, we're figuring out our people are home, they're on Zoom, they're calling in, um, maybe we have shifts coming in and out of the office, however we're handling this. So there might, there's going to be this little, little dip in production, you know, and, and figuring things out. But the idea that we can't just sit back and wait. This is, there's, this may be a, a quote unquote temporary situation, but there's going to be a timeline here. There's going to be some period of time where what we're seeing today is sort of the new normal. Is that a week long? Is that a month long? Is that three months long? We don't know. So the idea that we can't sit back uh, that we have to go out and, um, you know, and, and, and serve, serve our clients, serve our customers, be those trusted advisors, you know, that, that we have purported to be in the professional services world. Um, and I think Brian mentioned this a second ago, maybe find a pivot somewhere. And so we're, they're having these conversations and, uh, my theme for the day, I'm going to have a lot of conversations like this, uh, just like both of you will, uh, over the course of today. Uh, my theme for today that's coming from a lot of these conversations and questions is, how can we keep moving forward? How can we have these conversations with our customers and our clients and our, our partners without seeming 
like we're opportunists without seeming like we're uh, trying to be profiteers. We're trying to profit on uh, someone else's bad situation. And I think, um, I think that's a really good question uh, because you, obviously you don't want to come off that way, but you still have to be moving forward and you still have to find a way to continue to run your business and, con and continue to serve your customers and clients. The first prevention moment right now, uh, where we're all doing the social distancing, but it's really hard to really tell like how on the long run it will actually affect the business. And we think that a lot of our architects actually are having to go back to that first step of like the kind of empty page or whiteboard where you really ask yourself, why have I done all of this? in the first place, like what was the reason why I created the business and having, you know, architects reach out to you and mention some of the difficulties that they have been encountering. What was the main uh, go-to kind of advice that you've, um, you, you have, you know, you have suggested to them? Well, I, I think um, that's a really interesting question because I had a, a conversation almost exactly like, you know, the way that you just posed the question yesterday. And, um, you know, with, without being too self-serving, it really takes me back to the Build Your Brand podcast. Um, the whole premise behind that podcast is to look at, uh, number one, to look at a brand that's very different from architecture firms. Um, for season one, we selected Southwest Airlines and, and to look at a brand and sort of pull it apart and deconstruct it and look for those lessons that an architect or another another business owner, another small business type could could learn from a great big, really well known uh, brand, and so over the course of studying Southwest Airlines, it became very apparent that they they understood what their purpose and their passion was from the very beginning. It took them several years to really kind of mold that into the idea that they, they're the Freedom Airline. That was, that was sort of their first uh, uh, purpose statement. So it took a little bit of time to get there. But from the very first day, there's this, this story where the two founders sat in a bar and drew, drew a triangle on a, on a cocktail napkin. The purpose of that company has never changed from that triangle on the cocktail napkin. And so I was having this, this uh, conversation with an architect yesterday. He's a principal at a pretty large firm in the Midwest of the United States. And I said, you know, the real key to Southwest Airlines and the key to success, especially in crisis times, but in all times, is your focus. And with Southwest Airlines, they have this, and most people don't even understand how deep this goes, but they have this re relentless, that's, the, that's, the, that's really the only word I can use to describe it. They have a relentless focus on their purpose. And so no matter who you are in the organization, and of course they, they train and empower their entire organization to make decisions and things like that, but everybody in the organization, whenever a, a question comes up, whenever there's a, uh, something that needs to be dealt with. It's the first question is always, how does this relate back to our purpose? All decision making is based on that singular purpose. And I think in a time like this, no matter who you are, if to your point, if you think back to why you started your firm, and what your true purpose in serving your clients is, and let that be your guiding force, um, not to get too Star Wars on that, but but <laughs> sound a little bit like Yoda there. Um, but but having that relentless focus on your purpose and saying in a time like this, what is it that I do for my clients? How is it that I serve my clients? How is it that I make my clients' life, uh, business, whatever the context is? How is it that I make that better? And how does that inform us on the next step to take? And I think, uh, so I appreciate you bringing up the question in, in, in that way, because I think that's something that a lot of times we don't think about. We think about how are we going to survive this? Um, you know, what do we need to do to pivot, which we've already talked about. 
Um, what does it mean to work from home? But I think if we draw back to that purpose and say, okay, this is our purpose. What does that mean in terms of this next step or creating a new product offering or whatever the situation is? Yeah, I think um, that's, those are some great points. And as long as you don't look like Yoda, Jeff, I think you're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little taller than Yoda. Yeah. Um, if I could just keep my headphones. All right. Okay. Anyway. Um, you know, I think, I think that kind of, uh, you know, if I can just kind of extend on that, you know, it's like, I, I think one of the things that I heard this week was that you, you can only focus on what you can control. I think it was Mark, uh, LePage that, that mentioned that. And, um, uh, you know, I think I think that's really sage advice for where we're at right now. Um, we don't know how long this is going to last. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't we don't know uh, what's what's going to happen next. Um, it, it's something where we all have to be, I think, very flexible and very, um, uh, you know, just we have to adapt as the situation develops. And I, I think for architects, uh, uh, especially. Um, I think there's a huge opportunity in all of this. Um, first of all, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, I, I hear this from architects all, all the time. Uh, people don't know what I do, right? And, and people don't understand the value that I, I can bring. Um, well, now's your time to <clears throat> be able to kind of show that. Um, there are businesses that are shutting down for long periods of time and, uh, schools that are getting closed, that community centers, churches, all these places are going to be shuttered um, and, uh, and vacant for a long period of time. Uh, what can you do to advise people and counsel people on how to, you know, protect their assets uh, during this time period? What is the, the minimum viable, you know, maintenance on it, you know, and, and things like that. I mean, there's, I think there's a lot of things to think about uh, in, in how we can not only serve our clients, but how we can serve our communities and, and the people around us. Uh, and I think, I think architects need to be part of that discussion. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, uh, that's the way I'm steering uh, some of my conversations as well as to, is, is to like, let's just think out of the box a little bit and kind of look at what's going on around us and, and how can we con contribute in a way that's not only going to help others, but quite frankly, it's also going to help people better understand what your role is and, and, and how, you can, uh, how you can help the community. I think that is a really excellent point. And I think it brings up, um, you know, as you said, I think it brings up a really important topic. Every firm that I talk to ever will at some point talk about wanting to be the trusted advisor. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of, and this is not a new discussion. This goes all the way no. back to 1857 and the formation of the American yeah. Institute of Architects. This, the idea of the value of an architect and, and many architects recoil at the idea of other people, other uh, industries, other professions using the term architect. And to Brian's point, this is your time to plant the flag in the ground. Mm -hmm. This is the time to actually show what the value of an architect is. And for all of the architects out there that feel like they're being commoditized, which is almost all of them, yeah. for all of the architects out there that feel like, or, or that are uh, annoyed or offended when someone calls and says, hey, what does it cost to get a set of blueprints? And then you think, well, that's not what we do. You know, we design, we life safety and, and quality of space and all those things. Well, now's the time. Now is the time to say, hey, we offer a lot more to our clients, to our community, to the world at large than just producing a set of blueprints. Um, and so, you know, sorry, it sort of triggered me and I'm, I'm up on my soapbox now, but this yeah. is exactly the time and the exact type of situation that gives architects the ability to make that pivot 
and to really define and really explain the value that you bring. Now, the trick is you've got to be able to communicate that in a very clear and compelling way, which I'm sorry, but most mm-hmm. architects have done a very, very poor job of doing over history. That's why I'm in yep. business. That's why Brian's in business. That's what yep. keeps us paying our mortgages. But now's the time that you have to be able to clearly and, com- and uh, come up with a clear and compelling um, answer to the question, why should I choose you? What do you do? Uh, what's your value? Um, but it's, it's a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I mean, you know, the other, the other factor in that too, is that uh, most of your competitors are not going to be doing that. Correct. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a wide open lane for you to occupy right now uh, that our other architects just aren't even thinking about. And, yeah. You know, and, and let's face it, only smart people are going to watch videos like this. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Definitely those people that seek answers. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> no, but uh, actually, there's been some incredible points that you're making because um, I hear you also as an architect and that side of me says that um, we have such an incredible value to add to the community, right, that we serve. Mm-hmm. And so often it all goes down to just the, the simple service that we, we bring us to do. Like, yes, draw blueprints. But the truth of the matter is, is that we do create spaces of interaction. We, we almost like shape psychology, right, of, of uh, when people come together. And there's so much emotion and knowledge and the expertise that goes into what we do with the design aspects of things. And I think that um, that, that point that you're making to actually ask yourself, how can you be of value to your community within that moment of crisis to have um, experience in humanitarian architecture? And mm-hmm. I actually, whenever I went to a whole new scenario, whether there was a disaster relief project or extreme poverty, I realized that essentially I'm implementing the same strategies as an architect to every situation like that. Yes, there are shocking humanitarian kind of, um, you know, situations that get you a little bit stirred up, but at the same time, what is really, first of all, design and what is business? It's all about problem solving. Yeah. And right now we're in a situation where we're facing a massive a lot, problem and we problems. have an ability to come together to talk about it. We have the yeah. ability to listen to experiences and thoughts of other uh, influencers and thought influencers, yeah. such as the experts here. And so the ability to really ask yourself, how can I be of value today and be adaptable, like Brian said, be adaptable and flexible and just say, well, yeah, maybe I need to let go of drawing blueprints right now. Right. Hey, hey, here's, here's the thing, you know, that I heard, and I don't know if it's true, but I, I heard this. China built a thousand bed hospital in eight days. A thousand yes. bed hospital in eight days. Now, I don't, I, and, and, and the, uh, the person who uh, was saying this, uh, you know, it was on a news channel, something, they were having a panel. They said, here in, America, here in the U.S., we do not have that capability. So whatever happens in the next few weeks, when we get on the other side of this, people are going to be looking for additional answers and additional solutions. And they're going to be like, you know, like, how, how can we do that? Like, could, you know, how can we make that possible that we could build a, a thousand bed hospital in eight days here in the U.S.? when we really need it, when we go through a crisis like this, because my guess, you know, you got, you know, wherever you stand on the environment and, you know, the ice caps are melting. They say that, you know, new bacteria, new, new uh, pathogens are being released as a result of that. If that's true, there's more of this stuff coming our way. This is, this is just a wake up call is what some people are saying. So we have to be prepared. And how can architects contribute to those discussions going forward as well? Yeah. That- yeah. So um, it's it's. I think it's really important to just ask yourself: How can you 
today kind of provide a solution to whatever the new challenges that we face within our communities, maybe not on yeah. a global scale, but within our community. And by being able to be the first one there, right, there is so much more that can come from this. But it's about kind of shifting the consciousness around it a little bit. So instead of complaining on what was just lost, being able to make that pivot, and it really, it comes from the inside. It's like a decision you make. I won't be crying over spilled milk. I'm going to look for opportunities. Yeah, it, it's interesting. You, you know, when we, when we talk about commoditization, and, you know, I get into those kind of conversations a lot, when we think about commoditization, which, which is really defined by if you look the same and sound the same and act the same as everyone else. Now, when, we, when I say that, you look the same, sound the same, and act the same as everyone else, you, you're going to say, well, of, of course I'm different. Well, the problem is in the, world, in the world economy, you don't get to be the judge of that your clients and your prospective clients go, oh, well, does this firm look, sound, and act the same as the others? They're judging whether or not you're different, whether or not you're relevant. And so in that world of commoditization, it often comes after a disruption, right? And so we think about who have been disruptors over, over the last, let's just say, six years. Uber disrupted transportation. Uh, Carvana is disrupting car sales. Uh, Southwest Airlines, going back to when they were founded in 1967, they disrupted air travel. Maybe most of us hit, didn't think about a virus like this being a big disruptor, but the point is, if you are not the disruptor, you are going to be disrupted. Oh. And the, the, uh, the truth of all disruptors are to Sarah's point, they take they they uh, take a different mindset. They look at the business, they look at the environment, they look at um, the context that they're in in a different way. Uber looked at transportation not as how can we do taxi cabs better, but how can we move people around around faster and more conveniently. Carvana, how can we make uh, buying a car uh, more transparent and more convenient. Southwest Airlines, they were competing with ground transportation, not other airlines. So as an architect, you know, when you hear China built, um, you know, a hospital like that in eight days and you go, oh my gosh, there's no way we can do that. Why not? Mm -hmm. What are the barriers to getting there? And is that even really the point? <clears throat> Maybe the point is, how do we provide human services for other humans in the most convenient and most cost-effective way? Or if you don't yep. want to bring price into that, what's a different way to look at the business model? That's the only way to disrupt the system that we're in right now. Yep. There's no way in the world the architects of the United States are going to make a minor pivot and suddenly be able to do, uh, suddenly be able to design and build a hospital like that in eight days. It's not going to happen. It's no. going to take a major disruption in the way that we think about business. And, and now's the time to do that because uh, the coronavirus crisis is bringing disruption upon you. Um, so the question is, how do you respond? How do we think about having a stronger business when we come out of the other side of this, whenever that is? Uh, and that's, and it's got to go back to, Again, it, it's, it's not about you. It's not about your firm. It's about the people that you serve. So what's that purpose that, that, that you have to serve the clients that you have, or maybe new clients, uh, but what is that purpose? And how do you change your mindset to a way that, that's completely focused on that and drives business as you know it in a different direction? Exactly. I, I kind of subscribe, you know, something you said, it reminded me of something that, um, uh, you know, I, I was, I was always told that the best way through a bad situation is to figure out what you want as, as an outcome after that situation is over. Yeah. And I, I think that's, 
you know, that's, uh, I think a lot of people are really, you know, we're in the start of it. It's, it's like, they're just trying to figure out, okay, what's going to happen? What's, what do I need to prepare for? But I think as this thing, you know, I mean, you know, it looks like this is going to be a more than a few weeks kind of situation. Uh, there is going to be a, a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, and I, I don't know how well we're going to be able to recognize those different stages. But uh, as, we, as we move through this, um, it's going to be, uh, you know, people are going to have some t extra time on their hands, I'm sure. And this is a really good time to reflect on, um, you know, what, what, what can you bring to, to this discussion? What can you do? For your community, what what can you how can you be of service and help uh, to people? Uh, I think that's a really uh, important thing, uh, and uh, it's certainly something that we're going to be thinking about as as we move forward as well. Sure, and I think that um, one of the things that uh, Jeff you mentioned before about you know that inner voice saying you know I don't want to be opportunistic here. Um, I think it's a, ver a very valid uh, point, but I also think that it's really important to think, you know, when there is a need, there is a solution, right? And yeah. sometimes that solution won't come if you do not step up your game and actually, you know, present it to the world. So I almost feel like it's our moral obligation to put our talents out there, to put our voice out there, and to if we do hold an ability to come up with a solution to actually do it, right? And um, yeah. so I think that no matter who you are, it's a human aspect to always, you know, be maybe hold yourself back in this kind of moment of despair, thinking, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to, you know, act up or, or but, but actually that's exactly what's needed yeah. in this yeah. situation. The, the idea of, being an opportunist or a profiteer or whatever word you want to use really assumes that you're going into the situation to take something out for yourself without delivering any value. Yeah. And you, you said it very, very well. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to the world. If we want to say it that way to add value and to make things better. And so if you go into the situation and you add value, that's not being opportunistic. That's yeah, not being yeah. a profiteer. That's bringing value. It's, it's bringing the things that the people you serve need. Um, my friend, uh, Sean Van Dyke, who, uh, who uh, hopefully is going to be on our, our call later this afternoon uh, when we do our group call. Uh, he's got a great model that he created and it, it was, um, and I, I can't, uh, I'm going to see if I can find a, a screenshot for it, but you know, we, we are in a, a group, uh, together, a, a mentor group and the discussion came up, uh, yesterday. Oh uh, yeah, here it is. I'm going to share this. I'll share, share my screen here. Sean and I, and I are in this group together with, um, uh, Brad Martineau from uh, uh, from Sixth Division, and uh, so Sean was sharing this uh, this uh, diagram, and I wish I had the full thing. But so when this, so when you take value out, right, this ball kind of leans to the left here, right, and so you're you're taking profit, and you know you're you're, you're selling something. You're, you're taking profit, but you're not providing any value. And, and the, so then this kind of leans to the left and you become a fraud, right? So it's like, you know, it's like you're, you're, you're ripping people off basically. Uh, and then when this goes to the right, you know, you've got the value, uh, uh, but you're, you're not making profit. That becomes a charity. And so the idea is that you want to have a, you want to have a balanced business, right? And I thought that was a really interesting uh, concept, you know, when we're, when we're in this situation that we're in, yes, you know, you want to be out there providing value. Uh, you got to weigh that against what, you know, what that means for your business, for you, for your time, for, 
for all the other things. I mean, I, I will counsel everybody that you should take care of yourself first because you can't provide value if you're not taken care of. Um, but, uh, but once you get beyond that, you have to, you have to kind of set your priorities. Like what, what are, you know, what are my priorities? It's, you know, probably your family, your business, your, uh, it may be your community. Uh, however you, however you stack that. Um, and, uh, the, the, the cons, the, the, what we were talking about with China sharing this, it was really interesting. That diagram just clarified for me a lot of things. You know, there's a lot of business out there that, that provide a ton of value, but they don't, they don't take care of the business side. And so they ended up, they end up becoming, you know, that, that charity, like they're giving it away. You know, you've got others that are on the other side that are charging a lot, but they aren't providing that value. Right. That kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. Fraud's a strong word, but uh, it's quite a uh, spectrum. <laughs> yeah, it's, fraud's it's a big, charity. Yeah, it's a big spectrum. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's. Uh, it, it kind of implies some intention, which I don't think is always there. But um, uh, uh, and uh, what what Brad was saying, what our mentor was saying was, he, you know, he's 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 launching a new program April first. And it's, it's a high ticket program. It's not cheap, you know? Uh, I mean, I don't consider it cheap. It's $500 a month. And the thing is, is that he said, listen, I'm not gonna be apologetic about it. You know, we have a ton of value that we can provide to our, our, uh, our participants. And, you know, uh, I, have, I have every faith that you're gonna get a ton of value from this program. But, um, you know, I got to be realistic. I've got, I've got people that I employ. I've got a family to feed. I've got a business to run. And, um, so, and, and I don't have the capability to be able to just say, here, everybody, here it is for free. But, but what he did was he said, but listen, you know, if, if you can't afford $500 a month, I'll, 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 get, I'll provide the, the same program at $250 but I just won't give you all the extras that I was going to give you. Right. And so there's different ways that we can kind of look at how we can provide value. Right. We don't have to just say, Hey, X is how much I make an hour. And then that's what I'm going to do. There's different things that we can add in different, different things that we can, you know, different ways we can structure how we're bringing value uh, both to our clients, to our community. There's different ways that we can work through this situation and, uh, and, and still contribute, still provide value, still be somewhat profitable, hopefully. And, um, uh, and come out of this with, with what I call like, you know, like a win-win situation. Right. Yeah, exactly. I think that, um, you know, an ability to be able to price your service is very important. And when you are lacking that, you kind of make people around you feel awkward when it comes to the moment when you kind of start talking about it and it's like yeah. not landing anywhere. And yeah. what I have experienced is that the awkwardness comes from the fact that it kind of feels like you don't know how to value yourself. Yes. And self-love is kind of like the basis of being able to come out to people and give value to others, you know? So it's really important to have that relationship established with yourself first. And uh, I'm actually grateful for people that uh, know how to value themselves because it's, it's a good example for me. And I think that this um, capitalistic approach has been frowned, frowned upon too much, but... Um, I think when you find peace within your business and with yourself and with the, you know, years of education you put into it, uh, years of exposure to mentors and years of research and reading books about the subject, and then you become an expert. Um, if you think about the journey that you've undergone, it has the value, just, just that point along. Um, so, so I think it's, it's really important to make peace with it and, and whether it is the meaning of it all is that right now perhaps you need to pivot find a new way of of adding value to your community and put a whole new price tag onto it i think that's okay it's totally okay to do that <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and that, that price versus value discussion is really interesting and and the way the way that i like to um think about it and teach about it, I suppose, is, you know, what, what value 
does what you do bring to your ideal client? Now, in, in the architectural profession, there are a lot of people that base everything on an hourly rate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's wrong. And so now all the hate mail can come. But yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> Me too. Absolutely. Yeah. But but so many people, and, and some people use it to structure their proposal and things like that. And mm -hmm. I, I get it. I understand it. I worked in firms for 25 years. I understand the metrics. But if we go to a client and say, listen, I'm going to deliver this to you for X number of dollars per hour, you're saying that the only thing that, that you value or I value is my time, which is important. But you need to base the value of whatever it is that you do on their outcome. Mm -hmm. And so I like the example that Brian just used with the 500 versus the $250. If the value of that program is $500 a month, you know, the way it's built out, that's great. Uh, many people in, in that space will say, well, I want to deliver 10x value on the cost. So let's just say yep. the thinking is that if I charge $500 an, an, or $500 a month for that, then the person that goes through this program is going to get $5,000 a month value out of it. That's the way a lot of people think. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. Now to drop it down to 250 he said, I, I'll do it for 250 but I'm going to take this out of it and that out of it and that out of it. Perfect. Because now you're taking things out of it that have a value. They have an inherent value, but I can't deliver it at that same level. So in order to deliver it at 250 I've got to take things away. That's perfect. It's not that I'm reducing. It's not that I'm discounting. It's just I'm taking things off the table. And this is the value of what I'm leaving on the table. And I still expect, you know, going along that same thought process, I expect that based on this stuff that's still left on the table, you're going to get $2,500 value out of it. And, and that's the way people need to think about this is don't discount things. Change the offering. Change the scope. Change the actual value and the value still got to be there, but change the actual value of the offering. If you have to reduce the cost, then the scope, the value, the whatever has to change with it. And, and, um, and that's a trap that a lot of, a lot of people fall into. I know Sarah, when, when you and I talked the other, uh, well, I guess it was yesterday. Um, we talked for a minute about Blair Inn's book, um, uh, when without pitching manifesto. And there's a really good discussion about, value and discounting and things like that in, in that book. I'd encourage anybody in a design profession to, to check that out. Amazing. Well, um, I think we've gone for an hour. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, both of you, for your time. I think that it's been so interesting, actually, um, to talk about those things. I kind of wanted to ask the simple questions that the people are wondering about uh, and I think that we covered quite an interesting uh, spectrum of subjects. Um, I'm sure we can do it again uh, and I'm, I'm really hopeful that for anybody who is listening to this as well um, that we can start a discussion about this. We are all very much interested to hear how you're finding this moment of isolation, what difficulties are you facing, um, and how are you pivoting around those? Uh, if there is any opportunities, again, what opportunities do you locate? What do you feel could be a good way to, uh, to adapt right now as an architect to, to serve value to your community? Um, and, and check this place out for more of these kind of conversations. Um, and thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Brian and Jeff, for, for being here and supporting this conversation. And please tune in for more. Great. Thanks for thank the you. invitation. Happy to yeah, share. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, guys. Thanks.